Hello, I am Yogi Nisunita and this is Meditation, Yoga and Stuff podcast. I believe my dharma or my life's purpose is to share my understanding of meditation, yoga and Ayurveda, holistic healing science of India. I make these amazing wisdoms accessible and adaptable for present time. So let's start. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Today's topic is Yoga of Mind, Yoga Sutra. This episode is a rerun and I am doing this because of quest for many of you. So here we go. Enjoy Yoga of Mind, Yoga Sutra. Today I am talking about mind in wisdom of yoga. Particularly I am going to talk about Yoga Sutra. Yoga Sutra is a beautifully engineered text of modern yoga. Yoga Sutra is relatively new uh, compared to a lot of wisdom of yoga. But it is such a distilled information. It's such a beautiful information where the wisdom of yoga talks about how to work with our mind. We as a human being has not really changed that much. You know, even though this book is maybe two to three thousand years old, our human mind is still stuck into the same state. We still have similar worries and similar what we call it vritti or fluctuations of the mind. Let's start with what is the first sentence of uh, Yoga Sutra, Atha Yoga Anushasanam. What it means that here begins discipline of yoga. In this sentence itself, or even the first word itself, Atha, that means now, in this now, we begin our practice of yoga. And what is the practice? It is a discipline. Atha, in this now, where it starts. What is discipline? Discipline, well, what is called discipline? Discipline is something we do repeatedly. Every day, maybe same time, doing the practices for our body, mind, and our whole being, basically. That's what yoga philosophy offers us. So, Yoga Sutra is actually guidance on how to work with the mind. Even though you don't maybe understand Sanskrit, that's okay. There are many, many translations, beautiful translations available. If that is not your interest of learning wisdom of yoga, that's okay. Uh, But let's start with our mind. We all have mind, which is, and mind is very important. Mind is most powerful tool we have. But what happens that since childhood, we never train our mind. So we never discipline our mind. And here discipline is not in a rigid or strict sense. It is very compassionate way. One of the most important principle or guidelines of yoga is non-violence. And that non-violence starts with ourselves, with our thoughts, how we treat ourselves. Even in our thoughts or in our actions, how we treat others. This is all about the non-violence, living that life. Even just that principle can take us towards enlightenment. Atha, the word Atha means now. And the true reality of our life is in this breath, in this inhale and in this exhale. This is the only thing we have in our hand. We don't know what is going to happen with our next breath. Or what happened uh, breath before is already a past. So what we have is now. So connecting with our breath, connecting with our now here in this moment is the best way to bring ourselves back into ourself. Now what happens in uh, in our life that we are constantly looking outwards, we are constantly experiencing world with our senses. We do not pay attention to the most important being uh, or important being in this source that who is experiencing all these senses. What happens that most of the time when we are looking outward and trying in a way numb ourselves. So this is a way of like constantly looking out and not really coming back within ourselves. This is what has become human habit. And we learn this from our previous generations or society around us. This is what we see. We do not acknowledge if we are tired or if we 
something is happening, we always say that I'm okay if someone asks us, how are you? The answer is, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. But are we really feeling good? So this is the question we constantly come back to. What's happening? What's happening in this now? And how do we connect with that? It's just simply just connecting with our breath. So in wisdom of yoga, the breath is very important. The breath is really, really what connects us to ourselves. So just tuning into just few moments of connecting with the breath. So this is one tool we have. We can use it anytime, even if you are driving or even if you are standing in grocery line or if you are at your desk uh, working, whatever you're doing, you can just take a, f- a pause to just tune into your breath. It doesn't have to be for uh, minutes or minutes. It's just, just one or half minute. Just notice your breath, just tune in. And you will start noticing our mind and our breath is connected. Yogis realized this a long, long time ago. And that's why they worked with the breath. And now when I say work with the breath, and newcomers to the wisdom of yoga will start doing really big breathing practices or manipulating the breath the way they try to manipulate the body. But that's now how, not how it works. Our breath is very subtle. So we tune into that. Just noticing the breath will do the magic. And the breathing practices are very subtle. Very, very subtle. And so it's very important to just understand your breath first. Understand how your breath works. And then from there, once we understand that, that when, say, for example, if we are stressed, the breath is shallow, the breath is panting, uh, things like that, you start noticing about yourself and you start working with that. And now regular practices with the breath will help you to, in crisis situation, to manage your breath better. So the situations outside of us, we cannot really control. What we can work with is what we have. And what we have is our breath. So coming back to the breath. About the mind, as I was saying that mind and breath is very much connected. What if our breath is steady, then our mind will have less fluctuations, less, we call it vritti in wisdom of yoga, or movement of the mind. So mind is very fast. It's the fastest thing in the universe. One minute it is here, other minute it's somewhere else in the world, some, and another minute is back again. So it's the fastest moving. Oh, it has fast activities happening. So we need to understand that our thought is energy. We are made out of energy. And our mind and our breath is connected. So we, we need to understand all these things. Now, the thoughts can jump in past and present. And also, our mind stores information in such a way that it may not be the true information. It may be the story around that experience we had. And this story may come uh, into play with our experience in a way we store it. For example, something happened in past. Maybe you were riding a bike. You were wearing maybe a red shirt and you fell down and you now associate red color is bad for you. Things like that. And so whenever you wear red, maybe something other bad happened. So now you confirm that yes, red color is bad for me. So this is how this was just a hypothetical example. And this is how mind start creating stories and keeping that information as we call memory maybe just a story and what happens that initially when we have these stories which is called sanskaras in wisdom of yoga these are latent impression of our mind which we store and these uh, stories we create have such a quick reaction that before even we know we already reacted about this situation say for example if you have issue with uh, authority person in your childhood now someone's in your adulthood start similarly behaving like that then your reaction will be similar you know maybe anger or, or whatever that come up for you that the person from childhood you will have similar reaction to this person in your life maybe it's not the this person's fault in adult life but 
the your reaction will be similar because you are remembering someone from your childhood a story around it and now this reaction may have served you in childhood may be protected you but there comes a point in our life that we have to let go of these almost like burdens we are carrying and you may have heard in your yoga classes let it go this is what your wisdom of yoga is talking about that let it, letting go of whatever is not serving you and and sometimes we get so much stuck into these memories and in these stories and we start thinking that this is who we are and when we are on the path of yoga yoga sutra tells us that these are all just impressions these are all just sanskaras and we when we uh, move into stillness we start noticing these stories and start noticing that what we are holding on to and we gently let it go through meditation through regular practices and what are the obstacles for meditation so yoga sutra tells us about the obstacles of meditation as well like feeling sleepy imagination getting stuck into memory if not feeling well there are many many ways we can now modern thing is a time so the stories mind tell us procrastination all these things which we bring as a obstacle in our path of our meditation practice what else can be the obstacle our mind as i was telling about earlier that the stories mind weave that is also big obstacle that there is also a lot of fear uh, of turning inward a fear of we a lot of people do not want to face this but unless we tune in and and connect with ourselves we cannot grow so if you are looking for a self growth or a personal development we need to understand ourselves first and this is why meditation is beautiful beautiful way to do it there are many many uh, meditation practices uh, floating around uh, there are many many practices which you can do but wisdom of yoga gives us a, a clear um, guidance in this we start with what is called yamas and niyamas which are basically etiquettes and ethics uh, or guidelines of how to live your life in with society and also to how what is your ap- approach towards yourself so tuning inwards as well as tuning into your surroundings and how we communicate with others ethics are very important so what are your ethics what ethics you live by these uh, yamas and niyamas come under that it is beautiful beautiful ethics there then comes the uh, physical movement physical movement is necessary but also it has to be done with awareness and that's what the physical movements of wisdom of yoga is uh, that is called asana uh asana practice is nowadays when we say asana modern yoga it has become like a crazy pretzel practices with no awareness But having said that uh, there are also amazing modern yogis who bring so much awareness and shine light on the shadows of what's happening in the body so tuning into what really calls you what really helps you to tune inwards what happens when you do the practice and what happens after you do the practice really if you want to know the uh, asana practice really worked for you is see how you feel the rest of the day or see how you feel what is how is your mind is it still racing then definitely you need to change the practice if the mind is calm and still and you feel is still very clear that is way to go that's the practice for you so tune in to how you feel when you do the practice and after the practice and don't get me wrong sometimes we do need strong practice so tune in to that as well and sometimes we need gentle practice so listening to what we need is very important then moving on from there is the pranayam practices the breathing practices now as i was explaining our mind and our breath uh, and our 
whole body is very much connected. So let's look at it scientifically. What happens that with correct breathing practices, we oxygenate our system better. We oxygenate our brain, our blood. Uh, it's really, really uh, beneficial for our system. It also brings stillness of the mind. So meditation, uh, it also helps the meditation practice uh, because the breathing practices helps to still the mind. Next comes uh, something called Pratyahara practices. That means uh, the practices where we work with our sensory uh, system. So our sensory system is always overloaded because there are a lot of information is bombarded on that. So that can also create a lot of chaos in our mind. So what if we allow our sense, senses to slow down or maybe see if we can rest some of our senses and the sensory withdrawal is tremendously beneficial for mental health. Uh, we can do, for example, uh, doing the asana practice with using a cloth, a blind, light blindfold or you can do like um, really lying down comfortably and do the practices where you are focused on maybe listening or focused on your breath, things like that. There are beautiful, beautiful practices in wisdom of yoga for pratyahara practices. And when now that your mind is ready for understanding, now you start understanding what is stillness is, then we can move towards meditation. Because before that, if we move ourselves towards meditation, it may be overwhelming for mind. Mind doesn't know what to do. So suddenly, sometimes people say that, oh, I'm going to do meditation practice. I'm going to do a 30 minutes meditation practice. And with no experience, when that happens, then people, it's almost like a binge uh, of meditation, you know. And that's not going to work. Anything uh, excess is not going to work. So slowly and steadily introducing the meditation practices in your life is really good. And that's why this beautiful roadmap is given. This is, these are guidelines, you know. And um, from here, uh, we move towards meditation. We start with just cons uh, finding um, a slowly concentrating mind. So slowly start stilling the mind. And initially it may be just for a few moments. But then gradually move to the next stage where we can now hold that stillness for a little bit long period of time. So first we start just uh, slowly uh, stilling the mind. And what we do is we uh, sit for meditation and start to bring the mind back uh, from its wandering. And very gently, we can do it with uh, object like a mantra or you can uh, uh, focus on your breath or do the guided meditation. Guided meditation is still part of Pratyahara where you start focusing on some object. So we can, uh, it could be your breath, it could be your body, it could be a mantra, whatever works for you. And then when the mind starts stilling now, when you are used to it, and it may take maybe years sometimes, it's okay, be patient. And when the mind starts stilling, you can now hold the stillness for a little bit longer. That could be maybe a few minutes or and slowly it progresses and so on. The next stage is samadhi, can be called nirvana or enlightenment. And this is the stage, is the pinnacle of wisdom of yoga. Now, that may not be your goal, but just following these uh, eight limbs of yoga through Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, we can move, move towards our optimal well-being. Our mental health, our emotional, physical health improves. Overall, the wisdom of Yoga Sutra is so beautiful that our mind, state of our mind is really improves. We start noticing what really matters. You know, in uh, wisdom of yoga, we call it maya. What is illusion or maya? And a lot of time the mind creates a lot of illusions and stories. And we 
we cannot blame the mind uh, about that because these stories do serve us so it's purpose there are, there are reasons for that but there comes a point in life that we have to let it go let it go of that illusion and come back to reality so we slowly basically start unpeeling these layers of uh, things which are not serving us to do that the only way is to go inward to notice what's happening really tune in and this is why yoga is anushasan or it is a discipline and the regular practice matters uh, initially maybe there is a lot of procrastination and things like that happens uh, but once uh, on this path of yoga once we start noticing the benefit how the mind is still and how body is strong and flexible and how we are happy in a way you know even that feeling of tuning in i am okay that kind of thing uh, it takes time to get used to but that is possible and it doesn't matter that you in uh, you which profession you are or what you're doing in your life you start noticing that the what you are doing actually benefits with the wisdom of yoga because your mind is still now you are more productive in your day to day activities you're more aware your relationship improves there are lot of lot of benefits of this wisdom of yoga now if you want to tune into these stories sometimes we talk and uh, uh, which is called sanskaras these sanskaras very slowly we i uh, have to let it go whatever not serving us and it is almost like a death of ego the ego what we think who we are that will start slowly going away and you start actually tune in who truly you are okay what does that mean what was this sentence all about what happens that we create these stories based on our experience uh, usually it is mostly in childhood all these stories created by the mind to protect ourselves and sometimes these stories are not ours this could be uh, the people our care ge- givers in our life it could be their stories what they have they have left that impression on our mind and at young age we have very impressionable mind that's how we learn so we're learning that we're learning from the environment around us the society around us family around us and we create or weave these stories about what is um right or what is wrong and what is beneficial for me or what is not things like that and all this weaving of the thoughts weaving of the these stories uh, we start thinking that this is who i am but the reality is that you are a pure being these are just stories which we think we need to protect ourselves and when we start realizing that these stories have become burden that awareness that first thing realizing that that realization is the key that's where we win half battle and that's what yoga in the wisdom of yoga we call awareness so awareness is the key and how we become aware we start noticing our reactions we start noticing and this is where the wisdom of yoga's guidelines help us understand how we are behaving with ourselves how we are behaving with others how we are behaving with the society what are we eating how is that all these things really really matters we start becoming aware awareness is the key now once we become aware then what if we do not do anything about it if we pretend to be sleep it is still pretend so that's um, the first thing is uh, awareness before that was ignorance so now we are aware we are not ignorant but we cannot now pretend that we are going back to sleep or we are not ignorant now that we are aware now what so now here is uh, the question is what will you choose it's really up to you this is the battle happening in the mind the demons uh, sometimes it's called in wisdom of yoga demons of the mind 
This is where you get opportunity to do something about it and what you want to do about it. You can't really push or scrub or, you know, do these big things. Just tune inwards and start noticing and slowly let it go. Gently let it go. Be gentle. Be always gentle with yourself. Now, this is very important because this is the the biggest and most important guideline of ahinsa, non-violence. Because, yes, these things have happened. You cannot go back in past and change it. So acknowledging, noticing, accepting. Once we accept, from here, now we will start changing things. The acceptance will naturally almost like let it go. And, and there are a lot of time we don't even realize so much trauma is held into our mind. And it may not be the trauma in the sense of a war or things like that, but even childhood things where our ideas are pushed down or because of the what's happening in the society, maybe what what you're thinking is pushed down and and you were told that you are wrong or your creativity is pushed down. These are also puts a lot of pressure in our mind and a lot of uh, negative feelings. All these this creates this impression that I'm not good enough or things like that. I'm not worthy. All these things I have heard so many times from my clients. The reality is we are all worthy. This is what yoga tells us that we are all worthy. Every human being has a right to be enlightened. But these stories which are weave around us uh, and told uh, and been told to us that we almost sometimes start carrying that as a as a burden. It is time to keep those stories down, become aware that we're carrying these stories. Once we become aware, we can then let it go. So awareness is the key. Now, how do we let it go? Really noticing that the coloring around it and what how do we do that? Through meditation. Just becoming observer for a few moments. Every day, noticing. The mind initially, uh, when we start meditating, the mind initially may throw a lot of thoughts around and that happens. But it's okay, stay there. You can change the practice in a sense, like do the practices which makes you feel comfortable in the practice. Never ever force meditation practice because that's not ahinsa. So choose a practice where you will feel comfortable to do it. You don't have to sit cross-legged in, in a lotus pose on the floor. That's If your knees are not happy, if you're not able to concentrate, then that's not ahinsa. So if you need to, you can sit on chair, you can take as much as support you want. Do these practices modified according to your need because... According to wisdom of yoga, we are unique fingerprint of divine. What does that mean is that what the practices which will work for you is going to be unique and it's going to be for yourself. So don't just follow uh, the herd. Choose what feels right for your system. Once we know what works, continue doing that for at least 21 days. And if you want, you can continue maybe 40 days after that, you can increase the time. And and also, sometimes the practices need to grow with us. So there comes a point that you will need maybe a year or two year time or three year time. You may need to change the meditation practice and that's okay. You may need guidance. Um, Guidance is very important. I do mentoring sessions. So those who are interested, uh, feel free to reach out. I can design meditation practices according to your needs. And this is done uh, by tuning into your energy, tuning into what's happening in your life, how much time you have, and then I will design the practices. Also, you may find a good uh, meditation class. You can go there and practice. So choose a way to do it, maybe initially with the app. That's all right too. Uh, But over the period of time, uh, I suggest that let go of that outside, especially with the apps and things like that. 
Uh, it's okay to learn through the app, but then you start uh, doing the practices on your own rather than using the app. And that's my suggestion. That's way. That's the best way to do it because if we are listening to the app, we're still awareness outside. So start tuning inward. Start noticing what's happening. You can maybe guide yourself through the uh, meditation practice. Meditation practice doesn't really need much. You just need to quiet place and a comfortable seat and few moments of your time. Uh, find that time and I hope that this uh, discussion of how Yoga Sutra and the mind helps. I will talk about a little bit more uh, in next uh, session on Yoga Sutra and the mind uh, and also I will talk about Bhagavad Gita a little bit. I hope that this helped, this topic helped. I'm also Happy to talk with you about Yoga Sutra or anything, any particular things you want to ask. Feel free to email me through my website. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate you. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate that, that you're taking this time out of your day. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care. Bye for now. 